MedBio 1.1 Review MedBio All Exploration Notes Unit 1, 1.1 Life in the Earth Systems Exploration 1 School Notes How, how can tomato plants detect pests on the neighboring plants so they can protect themselves from infestation? Exploration question. Tomato plants can detect pests on a neighboring plant so they can protect themselves from infestation because the pests emit an odor or release a stain, a, a toxin smell when they are near that only plants can detect. Feedback loop of an air temperature becoming warmer than the thermostat setting. 78 Fahrenheit. The air temperature reaches 78 Fahrenheit. The thermostat senses the increase in air temperature. The air temperature turns on. I mean, air conditioner turns on. The air temperature reaches 78 Fahrenheit. The thermostat senses the, the decrease in, in a temperature in a temperature. The air conditioner turns off. One approach to understanding natural phenomena is called systems thinking. This way of thinking examines links and interactions between components or parts of a system to understand how the overall system works. Systems exist on all scales from atoms to the universe and can be living or non-living. Boundaries define the space of the system to separate that system from the rest of the universe, like the protective covering on a phone. The components are all parts of a system that interact to help the system carry out specific functions, like the parts on a phone that are needed to function properly. They send and receive radio signals and transform them into useful communication, like text messages on a phone. The inputs and outputs of different types of systems include energy, matter, and information. Outputs are generated when the inputs are processed in some way, like a radio single signal, an input, going into a vibration, which is an output which leads to sound. The components of a system include the controls that help keep the system working properly by monitoring and managing the inputs and outputs. Controls can be automatic, manually set, or a combination of both. So feedback is output that becomes input in the same system that generated the output. Physical models, larger, small, small, smaller and larger copies of an object. Model of a DNA mo molecule. Proportional relationships can lead to models, measure models measurements, and the re and the real objects measurements. Conceptual model. It, it can be a diagram or flowchart. Parts of the system are related, and they can process works like protein and synthesis. Mathematical model. Equations that generate data. Systems process works, and like grow and then this can help them find growth rate in a population. A simulation computer model that can test variables or observe outcomes, like protein in a human body to miss that can misfold and potentially cause disease. You might think of a model simply as a smaller scale physical representation of a larger system. However, models are not limited to physical objects. Human and scuba divers and the, how they interact and their inputs and outputs. The input is the air, but carbon dioxide is outputs. The scuba gear is supplying air to the, to the diver, which is how they interact. System thinking can lead to biology as a whole. Emergent properties is a property that a system has, but is, that its component parts do not have. That is, the sum that is greater than its parts. Cells are self-contained, systems that can function independently. Combined tissues can be functions more than the former. Language emergent properties. Sounds that combine to form words and then words can combine to form words. Words and sentences to get to become sentences can perform functions that individuals can't. DNA and molecules, genetic code of all organisms. They have the letters A, T, G, and C, different proteins with different proteins. Amino acid coded from 
coded for, from DNA information that codes for other proteins. Input of one system. Input is completely different. Unrelated system sh shivers slightly. This can make the body shiver slightly, which is the body's heat temperature heat generator from cold temperature. Systems lead to can be have different sizes and complexity with more layers levels of organization, like organisms or living things. Smaller systems like organs, t tissue, cell, two organisms are like systems, and like a bird to a to a plant. Two, two organisms can work as a system. Humans are systems too, which have a huge part to play in society. Earth system. It is full of solids, liquids, and gases, and living and non-living objects. They have all forms of energy within the boundary. A biosphere has smaller subsistence of living things. They can be aquatic or in land environments. Larger systems can also be the solar and milky way. Energy such as sunlight can go into an earth system such as matter and can come out as heat. This is the input output. Light becomes other energy forms and this drives the system cycle. The biosphere should be in the exact middle of the atmosphere, anthrosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere because that is where all systems of living things meet. I have pictures that go along with this exploration and the last one that appeared at the beginning. A system model has the geosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, atmosphere, and anthros anthrosphere. The geosphere has solids like solids. They are mountains, continents on the sea floor and below Earth's surface. Hydrosphere has water like liquid, ice, and water vapor versions. The biosphere has the area of Earth where life exists. Atmosphere has all the air in the area like solid, liquid base surfaces. The anthrosphere has area where all where the all humans that humans made or altered. Bio, the biosphere goes into the ecosystems, which have feedback mechanisms that keep it balanced and restore it to a balanced state when disrupted. This is this is the study of different scales. This is ecosystems have like either one. Can eat. In ecosystems, you can study a mule deer and the factors that affect it. An entire population goes into a community, and if multiple po po populations of different species come together and they all interact with each other. Ecosystems can be either terrestrial or land-based or aquatic, self -water, salt water, marine, or flesh water. Living things characteristics notes. They can reproduce, grow, change over time, stable, internal. They can respond to em environmental changes conditions, stable internal conditions. They have an energy source, water, nutrients, oxygen. They need this. Biotic components, plants, elk, insects, abiotic com components, snow, air, sunlight. Biomes are connected, can be more specific, like a prairie, a temperate grassland. But a frozen polar ice cap, snow, Ice-covered mountain peak are not biomes because they do not have specific plant communities. A biome is a major regional or global distribution of organisms characterized by specific climate conditions and plant communities. 
Many different types of biomes have pl plants and animals adapted to living in that environment. Many ecosystems make up a biome. Each ecosystem has specific biotic and abiotic factors that interact and are independent. Engineering, building artificial coral reefs. Earth's coral reefs are critical for the stability of marine ecosystems. Unfortunately, many are classified as threatened because of the effects of human activity. Living corals depend on the limestone deposited by their predecessors to get the minerals necessary to build their own bodies. However, the limestone is being dissolved from existing reefs due to increased ocean acidity caused by climate change. Marine ecologists are now combating this destruction by sinking artificial reefs, such as the one shown in figure 16, which uses electric currents to attract the limestone deposits needed by growing coral. Factors that affect biodiversity. Many factors can reduce biodiversity. Human activities can reduce it very quickly. Humans need food, and much of that food comes from crop plants. Large areas of land must be cleared to make fields to grow crops. Developing agricultural land removes most of the native plant and animal species in a region and replaces them with few species that are managed as crops. In addition, pesticide use can negatively affect any remaining native organisms. Biodiversity is also lost when land is cleared for human housing or, and industrial sites. Introduction of new plants and animals into ecosystems is another serious issue. These species can reduce biodiversity by preying on native species or outcompeting native species for resources, such as food or, or shelter. Keystone species. Sometimes a single species has an especially strong effect on an entire ecosystem. This species is called a keystone species. Whatever happens to this species affects the affects all the other species in, in that ecosystem. For example, when beavers build a dam across a stream, it turns a terrestrial ecosystem into a freshwater ecosystem. This kills existing plants and forces land animals to move to new territories. The pond's inhabitants rely on the beavers to maintain the dam. If the beavers are removed, the dam will eventually fall. The pond will drain and over time the land will return, return to a extraterrestrial ecosystem, such as a meadow. Competition occurs when two organisms compete for the same limited resource. This may be food, shelter, water, space, or any biotic or abiotic factor that both organisms need to survive. Whenever two organisms need the same resource in a habitat, they must compete for it. Competition can occur between members of different species or between members of the same species, such as blue jays fighting over food. Symbiosis. Symbiosis is a close ecological relationship between two or more organisms of different species that live in direct contact with one another. There are three major types of symbiosis, mutualism, conventionalism, and parasitism. Mutualism occurs when both species benefit from the relationship. A shrimp cleaning the mouth of a fish is an example of mutualism. Commensalism is a relationship between two organisms in which one organism receives ecological benefit from the other, while the other it neither benefits nor is harm. An egret that eats insects kicked up by a cow as it moves is an example of, com of commensalism. Paratism is a relationship in which one of the organisms benefits while the other one is harmed. Unlike a predator, which most often quickly kills and eats its prey, a parasite benefits by keeping the host alive for some period of time. A wasp that lays its eggs inside of a caterpillar is an example of parasitism. Biodiversity. Coral reefs make up a small percentage of marine habitats, but they, can't, but they contain most of the ocean species diversity. The most diverse an ecosystem is, the more likely it is to remain stable over the long term. If a disturbance such as pollution affects an ecosystem, recovery can happen more quickly if that ecosystem has more biodiversity. Biodiversity in Ecosystems 
The complexity of an ecosystem indicates its biodiversity. An area with high level of biodiversity, such as a tropical rainforest, has a large assortment of species living near one another. The amount of biodiversity found in an area depends on many factors, including moisture and temperature. The complex relationship in an ecosystem means that a change in a single biotic or abiotic component has many effects, both small and large on a number of different species. Data Analysis Measuring Biodiversity There are many different ways to measure diversity and biodiversity in an area. Two factors that ecologists often use are species richness and species evenness. Species ri richness is the number of species per sample of an area. Areas with a high number of different species have high species richness and therefore high biodiversity. Species evenness measures the relative abundance, population sizes of different species that make up a species richness. Species evenness considers the relative distribution of the numbers of species in an ecosystem. A biodiversity hotspot is an area with a very high level of biodiversity. Figure 15 shows a global map of biodiversity open spots. These locations often contain species that are found nowhere else in the world. One hotspot located in North America is the California Foristic Province, an area with Mediterranean-like climate that is home to giant sequoia and coastal redwood trees. Preserving biodiversity hotspots helps to prevent species from going extinct and protects the unique ecosystems as a whole. Maintaining as much biodiversity as possible makes the entire biosphere healthy, healthier and provides a more stable habitat for plants, animals, and other species. These areas are also important because they may hold clues to new medicines and new resources, and may further our understanding of the biosphere. What are two abiotic and two biotic conditions in the coral reef that provide the conditions necessary for it to have high biodiversity? How could the disturb disturbance affect the biodiversity of the coral reef? Two abiotic conditions are light and water temperature. Two biotic conditions are coral and seaweed. Disturbance could affect the biodiversity of the coral reef by less resources being available. The coral causing it to die, making it uninhabitable or usable for other sea life. What might happen to biodiversity in area one if a new bird species moves into the area? If this happened, the bird species would increase, causing more competition between them for food. How might biodiversity in Area 1 change if the new bird species ate small mammals, lizards, and toads? If this happened, only birds, bigger mammals, lizards, and toads would exist, altering the food chain. What two conclusions can you draw about the species richness and species evenness between the two areas? I can draw the conclusion that the species richness is overall more apparent in Area 1 compared to Area 2. Species evenness in the areas have a slight differences with Area 1 having more birds while Area 2 mostly has amphibians. MedBio 1.1 Vocab Medical Biology Unit 1 Living Systems 1.1 Living Systems A system is a set of interacting components considered to be a distinct entity for the purpose of study or understanding. Feedback is information from one step of the cycle that acts to change the behavior of a previous step of a cycle. 
A model is a plan, pattern, plan, representation, or description designed to show the structure or workings of an object, system, or concept. It can be either physical, conceptual, mathematical, or a simulation. Earth is made of, of smaller systems known as the biosphere, where all living things exist and interact. An ecosystem includes all the biotic and abiotic components in a given area. The living components in an ecosystem are called biotic factors. The non-living components of ecosystems are abiotic factors. A population is a group of the same species that lives in the same area. Biodiversity is a measure of the number of different species found within a specific area. Made by 1.1 Hog Research Clips and Exploration 2. Scientists use a set of characteristics to define living things. All living things are made up of one or more cells and require an energy source. They change and grow over time and reproduce and make copies of themselves or by having offspring. Living things also respond to changes in their environment. Homostasis is the maintenance of constant internal conditions in an organism. Although temperature and other environmental conditions are always changing. The conditions inside organisms usually stay quite stable. Maintaining stable internal conditions is critical to an organism's survival. The acronym is HOG RACER. H is homostasis, O is organized, G is grow, R is, res R is responding, A is adapt, C is cells, E is energy and R is reproduce. For example, with the Venus flytrap. A Venus flytrap plant obtains energy from the sun and nutrients by consuming insects. Some living things are a single cell, while others are made of multiple cells. The parasia is a single-celled organism. Cells are organized. Living things grow and change over time, which is adapting. A caterpillar experiences dramatic changes in body structure as it develop, develops into a butterfly. Living things respond to changes in their environment. This plant is folded, a plant can fold its leaves inward in response to strong gusts of wind.
Living things reproduce. Bacteria can reproduce very quickly by dividing their cells over and over again. And a tomato plant's response to being eaten by a hormone caterpillar can be described as a function as home of homeostasis. It's ability to maintain a stable condition. Med Bio 1.1 Viruses, Relationships, and Reefs How scientists think about the characteristics of living things undergoes revision as new evidence comes to light. For example, there is disagreement about whether viruses are alive because they do not have all the characteristics of living things. A virus is not made up of cells, does not maintain homostasis, and cannot reproduce without a host organism. Another way to think about life is as, is as an emergent property or collection of a certain living, non-living things. As an example, proteins are chemical building blocks in all organisms, but proteins by themselves are non-living things. However, proteins in combination with other molecules in a complex set of biochemical reactions make up living things. A virus consists of a strand of genetic material surrounded by a protein coat, but there are some membrane-bound viruses. Over time, life could emerge over time, could life emerge from the non-living components of viruses? And is there new evidence that many of the protein folds in viruses are also found in cells from a variety of organisms? Could this mean that viruses used to be alive? The debate continues. Relationships in ecosystems. The gray foxes and the other animals pe prey on mouse, rabbit, and insect populations for food. And they turn and in turn are food for larger carnivores. Plants compete with one another for space, water, and nutrients. Still, other organisms form interspecies relationships to provide or gain shelter, get protection, or find food. These interspecies interactions often benefit only one of the organisms in the relationship, but sometimes both organisms benefit. Predation and competition. Predation is the process in, by in which one organism, the predator, captures and feeds upon the other organism, the prey. The, the frog in figure 10 is a predator and the insect is, a, is its prey. However, if a snake slithered by, the frog might become its prey. Predation is not limited to carnivores. Herbivores that seek out and eat parts of living plants are considered predators too. The relationship between predator and prey is important for energy transfers in food chains. Engineering Building Artificial Coral Reefs Earth's coral reefs are critical for the stability of marine ecosystems. Unfortunately, many are classified as threatened because of the effects of human activity. Living corals depend on the limestone deposited by their predecessors to get the minerals necessary to build their own bodies. However, the limestone is being dissolved from existing reefs due to increased ocean acidity caused by climate change. Marine ecologists are now combating this destruction by sinking artificial reefs, such as the one shown in figure 16, which uses electric currents to attract the limestone deposits needed by growing coral. Factors that affect biodiversity. Many factors can reduce biodiversity. Human activities can reduce it very quickly. Humans need food, and much of that food comes from crop plants. Large areas of land must be cleared to make fields to grow crops. Developing agricultural land removes most of the native plant and animal species in a region and replaces them with few species that are managed as crops. In addition, pesticide use can negatively affect any na remaining native organisms. Biodiversity is also lost when land is cleared for human housing or and industrial sites. Introduction of new plants and animals into ecosystems is another serious issue. These species can reduce biodiversity by preying on native species or outcompeting native species for resources, such as food 
or shelter. Keystone species. Sometimes a single species has an especially strong effect on an entire ecosystem. This species is called a keystone species. Whatever happens to this species affects the affects all the other species in, in that ecosystem. For example, when beavers build a dam across a stream, it turns a terrestrial ecosystem into a freshwater ecosystem. This kills existing plants and forces land animals to move to new territories. The pond's inhabitants rely on the beavers to maintain the dam. If the beavers are removed, the dam will eventually fall. The pond will drain and over time, the land will return, return to a extraterrestrial ecosystem, such as a meadow. Med Bio 1.1 and